So I've been making a game and I want to share my progress with you. The type of game is factory building slash automation. I initially took inspiration from the fun I had automating things with redstone in Minecraft and Tekken. I thought it would be cool if players were able to automate all of the tasks required in the game with wiring. Wiring up logic and process timing is going to be a core gameplay mechanic. The wiring system that I currently have implemented consists of nodes that the player can place and connect to one another. If any of the nodes is powered, it powers all the others connected to it. You can then hook these wire nodes up to the lead nodes on machinery to activate the machinery. There are also logic gates and timing devices that you can hook the wires up to to program in some basic logic and control your machines. So in my case, the idea for the above mechanic came before any of the potential storyline or theming for my game. I've toyed with Minecraft's Redstone for years and I'm always amazed at how fun it makes what's essentially a form of 3D programming in a sandbox game. At its core, I want the game to evoke the same enjoyment of experimenting that I feel playing around with Redstone in Minecraft. With that said though, I have thought about things like a storyline and core gameplay loop. Here's what I have so far. AI robots are ruling over the world, but the one thing that they haven't been able to do is perfect baking. The player is spawned in as a captive of robots, and is told that they have to show the robots how to bake. So the player is going to have to bake different types of bread and cookies for the robots. In exchange for the player doing what they're told and meeting the demands of the robot overlords, the robots continue to let the player live and have some free time. So you may be thinking, why do robots need baked goods? Well, they don't. But I was thinking maybe in the robot society, they could just find it quirky and value the uniqueness of having something made by an animal. Humans, that is. Kind of like humans value handmade goods over those made by machine, or sometimes even actual art painted by animals. I'm kind of going for a funny plot, but I still have a lot of work to do to flesh out the details. For the art style of the game, I've been flip-flopping back and forth between a more stylized, cartoonish look and something more realistic. Right now I've landed somewhere in between. I'm using Unity standard materials and then applying an outline effect to the camera to make things stand out more. I've modeled almost all of the objects for the game myself so far, and I don't have much experience with making things look realistic. I have a long road ahead of me if I want to go down that path. So at this point you may be wondering, why is this a game about automating baking? Bread's not exactly the most exciting thing to have players make. But the main reason that I chose to go with bread is that it's really easy to find out exactly what's going into baking things, and everyone can pretty easily understand what's going on. As much as I love games with crafting systems, I want to make something more engaging than just tending a hammer at a crafting table with some arbitrary parts. The main reason games have simplified crafting systems is that making players craft every tiny component of each more complex object would just be too tedious to make a fun game out of. And on top of that, the developers of the game would have to know the complexities of each and every part inside and out. But something simple that anyone can do at their house though, like baking, most of the required ingredients are already going to be known by the player, making for easier onboarding. It'll also allow players to spend more time automating processes instead of looking up obscure parts recipes. Along the same lines of reigning and crafting, well, I don't want there to be any crafting. This may seem off trend for a game like this, but I don't want players to have to craft the machines that they want to use, and every step of the baking process will be with physical objects that the player interacts with. For example, instead of crafting flour, sugar, etc. into cookie dough, the player will pour all the ingredients into a bowl and then start a mixer to make the dough. If this sounds tedious, it's because it will be at first, but things will ramp up quickly as the player receives machines and parts to automate the process. Part of the reason for having things made like this is that it will allow players to be more creative in how they decide to automate things. Instead of something where there's only one set way to get ingredients into crafting machines, the physics based approach that I'll be taking will let players push, drop, or fling ingredients in any way that the physics engine will allow, which should hopefully lead to some interesting factory setups. So that's the working premise for the game. What have I actually implemented so far? Well, less than I'd like to admit for the amount of time I've put in. I've worked for a while to get the wiring system working without issues for the most part. Here's what that looks like. This is the wiring tool that's used for both placing and removing wire. Later I want to add an animation for the wire actually shooting out of the tool to where the wire is being placed. Right now I'm just using Unity's line render for the wire. Here are some of the wireable components that I have working. This is a logic gate. It has two different functions at the moment. If it's set into the AND function, the output wire will be powered on only if both of the side lead wires are powered. If the logic gate is set to the XOR function, the output wire will be powered if one and only one of the side leads is powered. I still need to add a normal OR function to the logic gate. 
This is a pulse timer. It's a timer that powers the output wire at fixed intervals. You can adjust the timer to change the amount of time between pulses, and you can also invert the pulse. If the timer is inverted, it means that the default power state is on, and the output wire will power down briefly every time the clock hand goes around. This is a switch, which should be self-explanatory. Although one caveat is that for now, power can only flow one way through this switch, even though it looks bi-directional. So those are the wiring components that I have so far. Next I'll just show some other things that I have in the game. This is the shop where players can spend credits they earn from shipping orders. Right now purchased items are just directly added to the player's inventory, but I think later the items will be delivered by drone or truck shipment and the player will have to pick them up. This could be frustrating as a player though, so I'm undecided for now. Here's an oven I have worked up. Right now it just spits out cookies if it's powered on. Eventually you'll have to physically put dough into the oven to bake things. I have placeable conveyor belts, but right now you have to place each one by hand. I'm going to work on some sort of system to just drag out a long conveyor belt so it's easier to work with. Here's a launcher. It triggers on power up and will apply an impulse force to any object on its launch surface. I also started working on the system for boxing up and sending out things that have been baked. If you box up cookies or anything else and close the box, a drone will come and carry the box away. I don't have much else to show right now. But if you want, you can try out what I have so far by going to the link in the description. So what are your thoughts on the idea to take things in a more physics-based direction? Do you think having a conventional crafting system would be a better idea? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear other opinions as I'm still thinking things through myself. If you enjoyed this, feel free to subscribe for more updates. I'm going to be trying to upload somewhat regularly. If I have anything to show, I'll try to upload weekly. Thanks for watching.